everyone for coming out. My name is Matt Harrington. I'm a developer evangelist here at Microsoft. Um, I live and work in San Francisco. Actually, I work out of this office. I work with Bruno. I blog at um, uh, a blog on MSDN, which is where Microsoft employees blog. You can find it at this short bit.ly link here. And uh, I tweet at MH415 initials in the area code. To level set, Windows Azure is the cloud offering from Microsoft. So who knows, who does not know what uh, Amazon Web Services is? Everyone knows what Amazon is, EC2? Okay, so I'll just use EC2 language as like the lingua franca here. So um, Azure is our version of, of EC2 essentially. So how many people are deployed on Amazon? Expected a fair number of you guys. How many people are deployed like on Rackspace? A bunch of people too. How about Joyent? I knew you would be. And uh, I just saw a couple other hands over here for Joyent, interesting. And um, how about Heroku? Remember, remember guys on Heroku too. Is there a big one that I've missed here? Probably. Got it, got it, okay, thanks. So um, <clears throat> to do some level setting here, I'm just gonna bring everyone up to speed with a couple PowerPoint slides about what Azure is, and then I'm gonna dive into some code for a, a sample application that uses Azure for, for storage. So on the left here, we have uh, traditional software, so that you're hosting in your own data center. And you maintain everything. You maintain the networking, the storage, the servers, the VMs, the data, the runtime. Everyone knows this. You're just running an application in your own data center. This is very familiar. And then on the right, we have three varieties of cloud providers. The first one is called Infrastructure as a Service, or IaaS. And the best known provider of this, I think, is Amazon. So the bottom four components here, networking, storage, servers, and virtualization, are managed by the vendor, in this case, by Amazon. On top of that, everything in orange, you manage yourself as a developer or as a DevOps person or as a systems manager or something like this. So you're going to choose your operating system. So Amazon supports multiple operating systems. You choose your operating system. You're going to patch it. You're going to take care of it. You're going to choose your middleware layer. And, and of course, you're going to manage your own data and your own application. In the middle here, moving over to the right, we have Platform as a Service, or PaaS, P-A-A-S. And this is what Azure is. So Azure is fundamentally different from what we traditionally think of as uh, Amazon Web Services. So as you can see, the bottom four components are the same, networking, storage, servers, and virtualization. Um, we manage that. On top of that, we manage the operating system, the middleware, and the runtime. So the advantage of this is that you don't have to manage this stuff yourself. So I go to many, many cloud talks, and um, so many of them are actually less about what the startup or what the cloud offering does and more about how they solve certain DevOps problems. And actually, those are kind of fun problems to solve. You think about um, how am I going to do change configuration or configuration management in huge clusters of systems? How am I going to roll out my updates to lots of systems and things like that? Those actually are kind of fun problems to solve, but I wonder if it actually makes economic sense for startups to do this, because you can use a platform as a service provider, like in the middle, and it's just done all for you. So when I came to the Microsoft sphere of influence uh, 12 months ago, I was especially attracted to platform as a service and to Azure. And on top of this, of course, you're going to manage your own data and your own application. And on the right, we have software as a service. So everything is in green, everything is managed by the vendor. So this is a, a typical example here would be uh, Microsoft Dynamics, an online CRM and enterprise resource planning offering from Microsoft or Salesforce.com. I'm sure everyone has heard of Salesforce.com. Everything is managed. So just I wanted to make sure we're all on the same page here. What I'm gonna be talking about here, Azure, uh, is the platform as a service offering here in the middle. So what is in Azure? This is a really simple slide here. So again, I'll be using the jargon from the Amazon world since everyone seems to be familiar with that. Um, we have core services. We have a compute offering, and this is akin to Amazon EC2. So this is just the computer in the sky, compute. We have storage. Within storage, we have a NoSQL offering, we have a queuing, sus a queuing offering, and we have a blob storage. Um, offering. So this is akin to uh, S3, I believe, from Amazon. And on the right, we have a traditional um, sort of industrial or enterprise strength relational database server. So we have SQL Server in the cloud. And on Amazon, I believe they offer um, MySQL. Uh, to the right here, we have a bunch of sort of supporting services. We have a caching layer. We have security services. There's a service bus for connectivity. Uh, there's a data market. So if you have a lot of data that you actually want to sell, you can put it up in the cloud and then charge per request. You can have applications that you put up in the cloud and then charge every time someone uses them, things like that. So there's actually quite a, quite a few more um, application services than I have displayed here. So 
that's all I have for PowerPoint. I just wanted to make sure we were all on the same page about what, what Azure was. You can call it Azure also if you're from Europe or Canada or something, but um, the way I describe it is Azure rhymes with Badger. So, Okay, so um, next I'm going to talk about Node on Windows. So um, of the people using Node who raised their hands earlier or who didn't raise their hands and want to raise it now, how many people are actually using it on, um, uh, I, on Windows? Okay, a couple of you guys. I assume everyone else is probably using like a Mac laptop and then deploying either to Linux or to Solaris in the cloud if you're using Joint or something like that. So um, there's really a lot of love for JavaScript at Microsoft. There's a lot of fans of JavaScript and you'll see it in, and you see it in a lot of products now and you'll see it in a lot more products coming out. And so um, the story is a couple of years ago, uh, we noticed that Node was taking off in popularity and we just wanted to get on that. Earlier versions of Node did not run well on Windows. So version 0.4 of Node and before had to be run in Sigwin. Sigwin project is really cool. It allows you to run POSIX applications on top of Windows, but it's not awesome. It's not, um, it's, things aren't very, very fast on it. So we worked with Joyent to port Node to Windows and in version 0.6, um, Windows is fully supported and it runs just as fast as it does on Linux. And it's done, uh, the, the way that this is accomplished is by using a sort of shim layer called libuv. And in the Linux world, you do IO uh, through something called ePolls, uh, ePoll, and then on, on Windows, you use IO completion ports. And these are really kind of complicated, low-level things. It's hard to find experts who, are, who know both of those worlds really, really well, um, even like you know, the top programmers out there. So libuv is an abstraction that makes this a lot easier. And when we worked with Joyent to port Node to Windows in a native way, um, of course, the Node team said, there's no way we're going to accept uh, a regression in performance when we support Windows. And we said, fair enough, we don't want that either. And actually, it got, um, Node got a little bit faster for, for, for the other platforms also when, when Windows support came out. We also have a full-time Microsoft employee who's a Node uh, committer named Igor Zinkowski. So there's really, again, there's a lot of love for, for Node and there's a lot of love for JavaScript at Microsoft. Not only that, but there's a lot of love for the asynchronous programming model that Bruno talked about earlier. So um, Windows 8, which will be coming out soon, everything that you do in Windows 8 for so-called Metro-style applications is done asynchronously. So if you want to write an application that blocks, you can't. So you do everything asynchronously, and that's, what, that's the same sort of philosophy that's in, that's in Node. So if you wanted to get started with Windows Azure, the first place to go is windowsazure.com. Uh, there's a free trial, so there's a three-month free trial. We do require a credit card, but we never charge it. We require the credit card only to uh, prevent fraud. Um, however, we give you like a monthly allotment for three months. And however, if you wanted to exceed that, if you wanted to use like more than your monthly allotment, you would check some box saying like, go ahead and charge my credit card. After that, we would continue to charge your credit card after three months. But it's not typically, if you don't do that, if you don't jump through that hoop, we don't charge your card after three months. So I just want to spread that word. Um, other cloud providers such as Amazon also require a credit card. So there's nothing unusual there. And the, all the offerings are described here, but um, what I wanted to point you out to, or point you guys to, is the Develop Center here. And you can see on the right, these are the officially supported SDKs from us. So of course, .NET is fully supported, so we're Microsoft, we make .NET, that's supported quite well. Node.js here. Uh, Java and PHP have official sort of um, um, SDKs from Microsoft. And you can run other applications also, like from Python or C++ or something like this. Basically, anything that runs on Windows will run in Windows Azure. If you click into the node area here, you'll see all sorts of tutorials on the left. So if anything that I talk to you tonight sounds interesting, you want to go back to windowsazure.com and look for all of these tutorials over here. Um, so I think we're going to take a break. So we're going to hold questions, but feel free to come find me and uh, I'll answer them. So thanks, guys. <laughs>